The beauty of using Dashing Dot in your classroom is that it requires no setup. There's no building, no construction, nothing to take apart when class time is over to prepare for the next class. The robots are self-contained and ready to interact with, but there's some suggestions we have to making it the best experience possible for both you as the teacher and your students. The first is classroom space. We suggest providing your students space on the floor to let Dash roll around and interact with Dot. It doesn't require much space, but at least a 5x5 five five area for your students to work is recommended, which will allow Dash to move around freely. We do not recommend putting Dash on a table, because when it comes to life, he gets excited and rolls around, and could possibly fall off. And while Dash is extremely durable, keeping him on the floor definitely provides the safest environment. Many classrooms love to give the robots special names, which is part of the bonding experience. Let your students vote on a name for each of your robots to personalize their experiences. This also makes connecting to your robots way much easier. In the app Wonder, you can name Dash and Dot to your liking, so they're easy to identify. We suggest also physically labeling your robots to make it easy to know which robot is which. You can use a permanent marker, or you can use a label maker to name your robots. For optimal user experience and interaction, we suggest one robot for every three children. We want programming and playing with Dash and Dot to be an opportunity to work collaboratively as a group and work together through each of the challenges as a team. Each child can have a job or a specific task, such as a robot handler, a programmer, and a documenter. As the students go through the challenges and lessons, they can switch off with each other to allow all users to experience a role at least once. And we know that all schools may have the funds to purchase enough for this ratio. So we've seen centers work really well, where students may be working on other activities throughout the classroom and then move to the area in the room with the robots. This allows students to interact with the robots in a given time period. It's suggested to keep your robots in a safe place while storing, so plugs don't get yanked out. Charging one or two robots is really easy, as it takes up only one outlet. But what do you do when you have a large number of robots that need charging? Well, what I found to be useful is purchasing a multi-USB charging unit. They start around $40 and can charge up to 10 robots at a time, or a mix of robots and tablets that you use to control the robots with. Included in the description of this video, is a unit that we've used that has proven to be successful for us. The other question that we frequently get is transporting Dash and Dot. Because many schools purchase the robots that get shared throughout the school and are looking for ways to not only store, but keep them charged and make them mobile. There are great cart solutions that are created by so many companies, and we found that a modified laptop cart can work really well. Also, there's a company like Copernicus that sells tech tubs that are storage containers that have charging units built into them. They're modular, which makes them really easy to stack, and it comes with a rolling cart to easily navigate them throughout each school. That link will also be provided in the video's description.